why and why now? Well, we're, um, we don't like the results right now, and uh, that brings us to evaluate a lot of things inside the organization. In, uh, and it's not, on, it's not about an individual person. The, the result of uh, Mr. Pern uh, being uh, uh, re-affected if he accepts our offer is more the result of a, um, a change from a global perspective, from a, a big picture perspective, where we need to be better at what we do. We need to be more efficient. And in order to do that, uh, that's one of the changes that we've decided to make. But it is in no way a reflection of uh, who he is as a person or, or what he's been doing and his competence and his, his is professionalism. It's a reflection of the results, though, that have been produced. Uh, our reevaluation of everything in, in the big picture of things is absolutely anytime you face new challenges, you, you need to look in the mirror. And that's what I've been doing, starting with myself. And uh, it's my, my job as the leader of the organization to try to help people better. And uh, that's what I feel we can do uh, going forward. Uh, and, and it's not because Mr. Pern is gone that all of a sudden everything's okay. It's about working differently and working hopefully more efficiently. Given the state of your team right now, how closely will you evaluate things moving forward uh, because if things continue over the next few games in the same manner, will we, there be more changes? We, we do that all the time, even when we're winning on, on a variety of fronts with player personnel, and, and everything that we do, I mean, this is a, like uh, Glenn Sater told me my first month in the job there when I first started in Ottawa, he said to me, Pierre, he said, in this job you never slack off, don't let anybody slack off. And he's right, I mean, that's the way we live. And now with the league closer than ever and so competitive, I mean, that's the way we work. So the answer to your question is every day, every minute. Pierre, I have two questions, if you don't mind. I'll say you said, the hockey is a great Yes. What do you think of your bench not being able to? Uh, I'm sorry. You talked, about, you talked about hockey being an emotional and passionate game, but there's not much of it behind your bench. Does that concern you? Well, you, you know what? That's that's interesting because uh, maybe inside the walls it's a lot more emotion than you think. And and uh, if you look at coaches around the league or behind the bench, I don't think that they're that emotional. Uh, inside the walls, it's a, probably a lot more. But but you know where hockey is emotional? It's an emotion. It's an it's emotional in the way you play the game. It's very emotional on the ice. And sometimes, actually, I, I believe the coach has to be the one that's the least emotional because he's got to analyze things and he's got to think. And uh, uh, the emotion transfers to everybody. The ups and downs, the fans, everybody gets very emotional because of the nature of the game. And But ourselves as leaders, we have to detach ourselves actually from emotion to be able to take the right decisions. It doesn't mean we don't feel them, but you know, we, there's a balance there that needs to be reached. My second question to you, Pierre, if you don't mind, is are you concerned with some of the coaching decisions at all over the last couple of games? A player, Lars Eller, telling us that for 42 minutes he had no idea that the goalie changed for Toronto. The two too many men on the ice penalties. Um, the goalie slamming his stick trying to get the attention of the bench. I'm yeah. wondering if that is concerning to you. I think you, you'd be on any team and all these questions come up at a time or another. I think that uh, what we're looking to do here is not to uh, uh, place the blame on anybody or uh, bring up one given situation or another and say this is what's wrong, this is what's wrong. I think uh, in order to, to do my job uh, as a leader and it is to help the people f function better, find better solutions, face challenges with more tools and uh, with more confidence. And uh, this is this is how we've approached the situation in the last few days. Did you come to this decision, Pierre? I'm sorry. Did you come to this decision with Jeff Molson or on your? This is entirely my decision. Uh, of course, uh, you know I talk to Jeff Molson every day. Mr. Molson is. Uh, the president of the club, and uh, but in good times and bad times, I talk to him just about every day, and uh, he's very supportive of what we do. We really appreciate it, uh, and it's the same with Mr. Martin. Uh, you know, even if this decision would have been, uh, uh, you know, part of Mr. Martin's, I mean, this is the type of decision that didn't belong to Mr. Martin because it's, it's very hard emotionally to do that. He's, he's a friend and he's also a co-worker, 
this is something that I needed to take care of. Not in terms of, is it about Perry or not uh, Mr. Pern or not Mr. Pern, but about what needs to be done to affect the types of changes we want to make. Can you elaborate? Can have to do with the performance of the power plant? No, that's what I just said. It's not about this or that in specifics. It's about, you know, uh, yeah, maybe the power play played very good last game. Uh, you know, and I think it's going in the right direction. But it, it's about uh, the big picture of facing our challenges better and going forward where hopefully we can be better at everything we do to the point where those types of, of streaks that we don't like don't happen anymore. Can you explain how this move will help will help you get that big picture improvement that you're looking for? What what do you hope results from this move? Well, th this is just uh, one move that is uh, um, starts right away in the big picture of trying to function differently. And, um, you know, like I told the players uh, earlier, I said this is not uh, ref a reflection on, on Mr. Perrin's job and it's, it's not this action that's going to change anything. But over time, we're going to function more efficiently, we're going to function better, we're going to function out of the box a little bit more than we have. And uh, that's this is one thing that's part of that change. Coach well, Fern was a trusted advisor to Jacques Martin for many years, as you yes. mentioned. So lots of people in the hockey world fans are wondering, does this send a message to Coach Martin as well? Well, what I, uh, you know, Mr. Martin, uh, this is a difficult day for him to, to see Mr. Fern uh, leave. And I, t I told Mr. Martin, I said, um, you know, we, we all have to change, and you have to change, and I have to change. And in order to change, you, there's got to have, there's going to be some movement of people as well as of other types of movements. And um, you know, the, the sometimes difficult decisions are needed to uh, to affect change. You have four defensemen that are very young: Weber, Diaz, Emil, and Mika Subban. Um, are you considering maybe bringing in a development coach? Or are you convinced that Randy Lattisert can serve not only as a coach but a mentor to these young defensemen to help develop? Well, we we have uh, you know obviously very competent people. Not only Mr. Lattisert to coach the team, and uh, the, these young people have uh, some strong veterans around them to help them as well. But that's uh, we're not going to bring in anybody new. We're just going to work inside our group. There might be some people that come in more often than others. We have a, a variety of resources around the organization, and uh, uh, that's all going to be part of some of the change that will be uh, in place. But um, the, these young defensemen are actually playing pretty well considering the, the situation they've been put in, and they're going to keep growing. I've, I've always thought, especially with Europeans like Mr. Yemelin and Mr. Diaz that come from Europe with now without any kind of North American experience, it usually takes about 20 to 30 games. We've had these people in Ottawa and elsewhere, and we've seen it elsewhere. And so they're actually ahead of their, their, uh, of their curve in those terms. They're, they're playing very well considering they've, they're adapting a lot quicker than they thought. And I mean, I'm sure there'll be ups and downs, but these guys look like they're going to be good players and they're adapting pretty quickly. The Markov update, are you hopeful he could be skating as soon as next week? Yes, uh, Mr. Markov has had a very good, what, what will have been uh, by the time he comes back Friday, three weeks uh, uh, in uh, down south with the, the, the medical people that operated on him and have a staff to work with uh, their patients. Uh, and uh, th there were some challenges that uh, needed to be overcome for him not to get repeated inflammation and fluids in the knee. And um, it, it's gone very well. He is, from what I understand, uh, especially the first week or so, was just drained by the amount of work he had to do. He was going two a days and very hard work and in, in a number of muscle groups around the knee. And, uh, but it's been very successful. And, and the good news about it, even though there is a delay, is that knee's been tested now. <laughs> because even though this was very hard, and at some point there was inflammation during the process, they pushed right through it, and, and the knee responded very well. There's no structural damage to the knee, we're sure of that. There's just uh, a process to get the knee back to the point where it can function at the level a, a knee needs to function to play in the National Hockey League, where the, the side effects of two operations in a row uh, don't get in the way of things. What do you, uh, what do you attribute the, the slow start to if it's not the coaches, it's not the players? Why is the team struggling out of the gate? Well, we've, in my opinion, 
uh, except for the game in Calgary and the game in Pittsburgh, we've played pretty well, well enough to win. And uh, we can list a long uh, series of reasons, but when you're close like that and uh, you have young people that keep improving, but also like, uh, you know, if you're on the room, around the room right now, you don't feel the, the, the deception or the lack of confidence or anything. They're all caring. There's, uh, they're, they're all on board. They're all on board with the coaching staff. They're all uh, very concerned, but very much at work. Um, it, it's, it's not a team that feels we're not good enough. It's a team that feels we got to be better because we're close. It's, it's, it, it's actually more frustrating this way. And it's certainly the last few games have been very frustrating from that point of view. And so we need to be a little bit better in a lot of areas. And in order to do that, we, you know, we need to affect some change. Uh, and that over time will, will hopefully uh, make us you know, uh, better at, at avoiding these types of situations. Karen, if